It's no secret that I'm a fan of Technics, but their new SUGX70 integrated amplifier may be the most important product they've ever made. The new SUGX70, it looks like your typical integrated amplifier. It produces 30 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 60 watts into 4. Now, if those numbers sound low, stick with me because total wattage isn't everything. This amp had zero issues driving our more demanding KEF R11 metas, which are 4 ohm speakers that can dip as low as 3.2, and yet the Technics was capable of reaching reference levels, I'm talking peaks over 100 dB, without strain and with dynamic range to spare. But if you need more power, it's okay, the GX70 does have preamp outs. The GX70, like Technic's other two integrated amplifiers, the SUG700 Mark II and R1000, is an all digital amplifier. This is not your typical Class D or hybrid integrated. All signals, analog or digital, including those from a turntable, are converted to digital and kept in the digital realm. While this may displease analog purists, this means that you do not need a separate DAC when using the GX70. In fact, it would be really silly to use one. The inclusion of HDMI represents a clear change for Technics, and more broadly, the hobby in general. The HDMI input with support for ARC allows users to connect this amp to their smart TV, enabling the GX70 to be the centerpiece of a stereo home theater setup. Given that this is Technics' first HDMI-equipped product, its performance has been shockingly flawless. The implementation of HDMI here is unique and proprietary to the brand, so I'm, I'm not going to bore you with the nerdy details, but if you want to know more, there's a link in the description for that. In addition to HDMI, the Technics also offers both wired and wireless streaming options, and this includes an Ethernet port, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirPlay 2, Chromecast, as well as internet radio. There's also native support for streaming services like Spotify, Tidal, Amazon Music, and Cobuzz through the Technics Audio Center app. In other words, the GX70 has a built-in streamer. It supports high-res music files and even has a built-in MQA decoder. Don't at me. Now jumping into setup, let, let's talk about the app for just a minute. First off, it is best on iOS devices. Sorry, Android guys. It can serve as the GX70's remote as well as a hub for your streaming services. But what's really cool is the presence of Spacetune, which is an auto room correction solution that is unique to the GX70, something both the more expensive G700 and R1000 don't have. Spacetune is pretty robust, allowing for multiple settings like free, wall, corner, or shelf, but you also get a custom setting as well as a full auto EQ mode. The auto EQ mode uses the mic in your smartphone to calibrate your speakers to your room, and it only takes about 30 seconds. The results are noticeable, especially in the bass. I found it made the Meta's bass tighter and more focused, even in a treated room like ours. Using the Audio Center app, which worked flawlessly, you can turn your EQ settings on and off, or even combine them with more traditional adjustments to the bass and treble by using the GX70's tone and balance controls. We listen to the KEF R11 Metas with and without Spacetune active. Regardless of the source or material, the modest Technics drove the large KEF towers arguably, as well as the far costlier Class A Delta Stereo amp when listening at everyday levels. Obviously, the Class A amp, as well as our Emotiva XPA and Audiolab 8300 XP amps, they're going to have more dynamic headroom when listening at concert volumes with peaks in excess of 100 dB, but up to 90 dB and below, the GX70 is every bit their equal. When it comes to low-level listening, the Technics exacting detail made the GX70 one of the best low-level listening amplifiers I've heard, especially with Spacetune engaged. In our room, the KEFs are pretty balanced top to bottom. They're not ruler flat, but linear enough that I rarely feel the need to employ EQ. With Spacetune off, dance tracks like False Reactions by The Last Lings and hip-hop favorites like Forgot About Dre or Numb and Encore, they had more depth in the bass. Not only could I hear the added weight in the KEFs bass, but I could also feel it. However, when I switched to tracks with more nuanced bass like Moby's Everloving, I definitely prefer the GX70's hyper-focused and grippy presentation with space tune on. Regardless of what you're listening to, it's super easy to switch between the two profiles and experience the same speakers in different ways. For only having 30 watts on tap, the GX70 epitomizes control, allowing you to hear every aspect of a kick drum, double bass, or synth note that's in a recording. This is not an amplifier that glosses over anything. 
The GX70 is a tour de force when it comes to the mid-range. I'm even going to go so far as to say that the 70s mid-range is equal to Technic's costlier R1000, which isn't surprising considering that they actually share some components. There's a clarity to Technic's sound across all of their products. In the 70, it's no different. The GX70 has no coloration. It is transparent. And I loved how defined and precise the mid-range sounded, especially vocal stems and harmonies. Dominique Fee's Amis Birds is a perfect example of what I'm talking about as her own backup vocals took on a newfound presence and separation from her main vocal track. She sounded like three or four distinct singers, each occupying their own physical space rather than just layered self-harmonies. Typically, only costlier amps can pull this off, but not all do it with the GX70's level of confidence. Which brings us to the treble. Being super nitpicky, I would not be surprised if some find the top end to be a little thin, dare I say rough, especially at very high volumes or when listening to compressed pop recordings. But when you feed it the good stuff or keep the volume just below stun, there ain't nothing wrong with it. Like the mid-range, the GX70 digs in and extracts everything from a recording, leaving nothing to the imagination. Whether you're listening to internet, radio, or your best high-res audio track, I'm willing to bet you'll hear aspects of the music you haven't heard before, at least not with this level of focus. As for soundstage and dynamics, if your speakers are capable of recreating a boundary-defying stage, this amp isn't going to rob them of that ability. You may even feel as if this soundstage is larger and more well-defined. Dynamically, the GX70 was more than enough for me and our kefs. As long as you don't want to listen for prolonged periods, periods at volumes greater than 100 dB, which I don't, I don't believe you're going to be disappointed with the 70. For those of you with difficult to drive speakers, this is the most powerful sounding 30 watt anything I've ever experienced. Taking a break to thank today's sponsor, Martin Logan. Featuring both sound and design cues from their higher-end Motion and Motion XT series, Martin Logan's new Motion Foundation series speakers don't just deliver high performance, they're now more affordable than ever. From now until October 29th, save 20% on any Martin Logan Motion Foundation series speaker at participating retailers in the U.S. and Canada. With a choice of five models and three decor-friendly finishes, Martin Logan's Motion Foundation speakers are an ideal choice for building a high-value, high-performance stereo or surround sound system that looks modern and sounds incredible. Learn more about this limited-time offer by clicking the link down below. Now, back to the show. The GX70 is very capable of being the centerpiece of a modern hi-fi or two-channel home theater system without needing additional components. There's no point in me commenting on how this amp performs with, say, the EverSolo Z8 DAC because the EverSolo would be redundant. Whether streaming directly from the app or from my MacBook Pro using AirPlay or our Apple TV 4K through our Sony TV, the sound quality was 100% consistent. I could not alter its house sound through different digital sources. Chasing the latest IT accessory or $100 whatever isn't necessary with the GX70, so buy right and buy once and get off that streamer, DAC, Wonderbox, whatever hamster wheel. In my opinion, the GX70's Phono preamp is equal to the one found in the costlier G700 Mark II and close to the ultra-expensive R1000. Records had a near CD-like level of clarity, and I know that may rub some of you the wrong way, but that shouldn't take anything away from how good this Phono stage is. Directly comparing Tori Amos' Crazy across three different formats, streaming, disc, and vinyl, it was spooky how close and how clear the record was in comparison. If you want to bask in the warm fuzziness of an old album, this may not be the amp for you, but if you want to enjoy your records at a higher level of fidelity, step on up. I honestly don't believe there's an integrated currently on the market at or under two grand that is as all-inclusive, as well thought out, functional, and sonically brilliant as the Technics SUGX70. As much as I loved the G700 Mark II, I'd rather have this. No, it doesn't look as sexy, and yes, I miss the meters, but you get so much more with the GX70. The 700 has more power, true, but for the majority of users, you may never need or use it. As for the Audiolab 7000A, I still love it, but the Technics delivers more value. If you're big into amplifier, Class, the more powerful Class AB amp inside the 7000A will appeal to many of you, and I, I know it does me, but head-to-head, -head, I preferred the Technics. If you want to add streaming, 
streaming and whatnot to the audio lab, that's all going to cost extra, taking the cost well north of what the Technics commands. But if you want, say, a more traditional hi-fi experience, one that's going to allow you to experiment with other components to affect the sound of your system, you should still consider the audio lab. The Yamaha 1000A we just reviewed comes in a close second to the Technics, at least for me. I could be happy with either, and if you have a more demanding speaker or have a tendency to want to listen really, really loud, you should probably get the Yamaha or step up to the Technics G700. For everyone else, the Technics is a little more defined sonically, and when it comes to features, it takes everything that I loved about the Yamaha and just refines damn near everything. Now, we just took delivery of the Stereo 70 from Marantz, so I can't go into too much detail, but let me just try and save some of you some anxiety. Sonically, the Technics is better, but if the GX70's price tag is more than you can swing, the Stereo 70 is insanely good, especially if you are searching for a hi-fi component that is more home theater focused. The Technics SUGX70 represents an inflection point, not only for the brand, but for Hi-Fi on the whole. I, for one, definitely, I, I did not have Technics coming out with one of Hi-Fi's most comprehensive integrated amplifiers ever on my bingo card for 2023. Never mind it performing well above its asking price and competing in ways that are just really hard to believe. This is a product that the Hi-Fi community at large, it needs to take note of because it is proof that you don't have to go crazy or broke chasing and matching components to achieve audio file nirvana. It is an outstanding example of a single product that can do it all. As far as I'm concerned, the Technics SU GX70, it's a home run. All right, so that's enough gushing out of me. But before we get out of here, what'd you think of it? Well, first of all, mm -hmm. I just want to say that I'm actually really impressed, almost proud of Technics. Hmm. Because I, I never thought that they would implement HDMI into their products. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I look, I get it. I know that it can be really difficult for brands to embrace features that may ultimately alienate some of their biggest fans. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you if you want to move forward, at some point you have to just just, you know, get on the train mm -hmm. or get left behind. Yeah. So I'm I'm really excited that yeah. they went this direction. It, it will it'll be cool to see where this carries them forward in the yeah. future. As far as the amp itself, I I love the sound of the amp, but mm -hmm. in all honesty, I'm not sure they've ever made an amp that I didn't love. Yeah. You know, it worked great. Uh, I thought the Space Tune Auto EQ was probably the standout for me. Mm -hmm. um, it makes us such a versatile amp. So yeah. for our viewers, those of you who have musical preferences similar to ours that cross, mm -hmm. you know, a wide range of genres, being able to effectively switch your speaker's sound for specific songs is incredibly cool yeah. and useful. You know, one thing I wanted to ask you about okay. is, so we just pulled out the higher end Yamaha speakers last night mm -hmm. and we were listening in, to music and watching TV mm -hmm. uh, with the Technics matched to those particular speakers. Correct. So I'm curious to know what your impressions are of those two products together. Um, well, the Technics can drive the Yamaha towers brilliantly, same as they did with the Kef. I do think the Kef is actually a little bit better match. And the only thing that I, the only reason I'm saying that is there is a known peak in the Yamaha's treble performance. It's there on purpose. Very similar to kind of how Yamaha pianos are. Anyone that's a piano player will attest to Yamaha pianos just sound a little bit more lively compared to, say, a Steinway. And these speakers have that kind of trait. Now, if you're at all kind of sensitive to high frequencies, which you know I am, that 15 kilohertz spike for me with some recordings or dialogue tracks that are kind of full of some sibilance, that becomes a problem for me. So I have been able to EQ that out using, say, Yamaha's um, various settings in their amps. However, you can use the tone controls in the Technics to kind of tamp that down because it would appear that their auto room correction does not go higher than 8K. So their auto room correction is not addressing that 15 kilohertz peak. And I did, I only just found that out um, because every other speaker that I tested this particular amp on, 
um, didn't have that unique character trait. And so it wasn't something that jumped out at me. But um, that is something to be aware of. Now, Yamaha isn't the only speaker company on the planet that has peaks in the in the treble to accentuate uh, air and, and things like that. Um, so I'm not knocking the Yamaha speaker. But if I were like, hey, you know, the Technics pairs well with everything, I, I do believe that it does. But as far as the three or four different speakers I've used on this amp, the Yamaha is good, but it's actually my least favorite. Well, I want to go back to HDMI sure, real yeah. quick because there are a few products that mm -hmm. had HDMI long before the GX70. <laughs> yes. So I have a feeling we may get some questions okay. about how these particular products compare. Sure. So starting with Cambridge Audio's Evo 75, um, look, the Cambridge stuff, especially the Evo amps, I mean, they, they didn't do it for me. Um, if I'm not mistaken, they are Class D. I do believe that they use a third-party Class D amplifier. Much like my commentary on uh, Magintosh a couple of weeks ago, it just didn't sound like a Cambridge amp to me. Did it sound bad? No. It was just more NAD, more just sort of here you go. I don't recall the Cambridge having any HDMI issues, so it, that's fine. It definitely has a better screen. The screen on the GX70, uh, it's admittedly kind of basic, um, whereas the Cambridge is better. But it's really going to come down to like which kind of non-class A, class AB sound are you going to find preferential with, with these two products. And I'm going to go in the way, way back machine oh, no. and bring up Na the name you knew, knew Adam. It. I knew it. <laughs> Which is insanely priced right now. Yeah. At thirty eight hundred dollars. Yeah. I mean, you know, at one point it was one of our favorite amplifiers. It still is. To be perfectly honest, it still is. Um, the the th two or three things that make the name still a standout in twenty twenty three, despite being a little bit now behind. Um, in terms of features is it is a class AB amp using a toroidal transformer, which is remarkable considering how small that piece is. Uh, industrial design wise, it's still one of the sexiest components ever made ever. And I'll, I'll fight you on that one. Um, and the screen and the usability, the app, the day to day just experience with the name is still class leading. All that said, the second I lived with the Technics for more than a day, not only did I have feelings of name and going like, oh, this is what it's like to truly live with something that does everything. Once I really started to dig into the app and, and, and customize the Technics to my liking, I was like, if the name Unity Atom V2 does not step it up to the level that Technics has done with the GX70, it's not worth buying, plain and simple. Between the Geno engine, the room correction on the Technics, and their adaptive amplifier technology to your speaker's particular load, those three things combine, it's really hard to beat. It's really, really hard to beat. And then you couple it with the fact that the Technics is dead, nuts, silent, whereas the name is not. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the Technics is probably a color screen, a nice OLED screen away from being absolutely flawless. The, the NADC 700 right now is mm -hmm. on sale for mm -hmm. about $1,500, no? which makes it a, a yeah. pretty good buy. We know NAD has a very clean, yeah. clean, clean sound. It's To me, it's a bit sterile, mm -hmm. but I will say one thing, they are not, they they don't skimp on what they give you. Look, the C seven hundred is it's great. It's it's great, and I think in the Yamaha review we talked about it. Um, it and the power node for me they're interchangeable. They're fantastic. I would take the C seven hundred because it has the screen and a few manual buttons that I like better. If memory serves, I don't believe the C seven hundred had a phono preamp, and even if it did. Um, there are very few phono preamps built into anything nowadays that, in my opinion, are as good as what Technics has. So if you're a vinyl enthusiast, but you don't mind your vinyl being converted from analog to digital, get the Technics all day. 
Um, Blue OS is great. There is way more customization um, as far as sound and tailoring the sound to your room uh, with Technics. And so if you have a room that you know to be peaky in the bass, or you have a room that you need to tame certain frequencies because maybe it's super reflective, the Technics is going to be the better fit for you. So just kind of keep that in mind. I think if the C700 is currently $1,400, $1,500, I do think the added $400 or $500 investment in the Technics could be better. But if you do need a little bit more power, you feel more comfortable knowing you have more power. Um, the C700 is still fantastic. But if that is where you are at, I would not sleep on the Yamaha 1000A. If you want to have that comfort of knowing that you have 100 watts and it's good, uh, you know, down to two ohms in short bursts, um, the Yamaha would be what I look at over even a C700 because you're only going up about 200 bucks. And in my opinion, you are getting more value for your money that way. That's it. That's, that's our review of Technics SU GX70. I hope in the future, uh, brands start giving their products names because <laughs> I hate having to remember SUGX70. But that's besides the point because now it's time for you to tell us, what did you think? What do you think of this? I think it's, like I said, darn near perfect. Darn near perfect. I love it. Uh, so I am curious how you feel about it. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Go ahead, ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christie's left for you down below, know that that's a great way that you've continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us thank you all very much for doing that. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audio File. That's it. That's it for us today. So remember, the only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.